Good evening from Chitna, Alaska, and it's finally time for us to go fishing. It's Monday night, about six o'clock. Uh, we've been here, this will be our fifth night. Uh, fishing has slowly picked up. The uh, fish counts through the little sonars have been uh, going up steadily. So we're gonna go out and give it a shot, and hopefully within a 36 hour time period, we'll be able to catch all our fish so we can then head home to Seward. This is the first gnarly place we have to cross where I decided I would get out and wait. It's just a little steep here. Sometimes it's worth taking the walk instead. <laughs> this is the edge of the cliff. This is why I got off. And of course our little ATV just made it no problem at all. She goes everywhere we want. made it out to our uh, fishing hole that we planned on fishing, but the water's come up about 18 inches since we were here a few days ago. And right out there is a beautiful eddy where fish will just swim circles. And right now I'm looking to see if there's an eddy in here. And when I say eddy, I mean the current is moving that way. We want to find a section where the current is moving upriver and it just swirls around and fish hang out in those swirls. And I'm tossing these pieces of wood out there to see which way the water's flowing. This isn't a good spot now. Nope. Well, let's jump in and see what's up here. It's time to put our net in the water. And if I read this water correctly with the eddy going up, the bag of our net, which is this portion hanging down, will be hanging upriver. <laughs> it is very shallow. I think he's not happy. He's about to say we're going to move. I don't like it. Okay. Well, folks, we are at our third stop. This is really such a bummer that our original place has washed away because we came down here and scouted it out, found the perfect place, and knew that the eddy was just right, and now we're having a terrible time finding just the right place here. Um, so this is the third try, and we'll see what Ben's verdict is. I told him, I'm not unpacking the ATV until he gives the word that we're going to stay because I've unpacked it twice. <laughs> and this is not looking very positive. He's scoping everything out and looking at the water and reading it, trying to figure out where to go and shaking his head, which is not a good sign. So this is our fourth and probably final location we're going to attempt in this area. Ben's out there trying to see if there's an eddy there that will be enough to pick up the net and put it in the right direction, which I can tell by his body language. It is not. 
Uh, we've been presented with a few challenges this year. Normally, by this time of the year, the runs are peaking, uh, getting really high. Secondly, the river is a lot lower than it normally is, so the usual fishing spots may be too shallow uh, for you to fish in. So we're just having a lot of challenges, but we're not the only ones. We've talked to a lot of folks that have come through um, commenting how humbled they are. They've never had a year like this. It's been really challenging. It's not looking good. No eddies. We're going to have to go somewhere else. So are we better off scouting tonight? Probably. So we don't waste tomorrow evening doing it too. I don't know if you can see it off in the distance there, but we left the ATV down there and crossed a little, it's not a crick, but it's a little inlet from the river. And worked our way down the beach here until we found this. Ben's been sitting here for a little bit. I waited until he was sure it was the right spot and then I drug all the stuff down here that we needed. It all fit in a five gallon bucket so it wasn't a big deal. But you can see that the water is running really fast out there and then in here it's an eddy. It's a lull. So we're gonna see what we can catch here. Hopefully we get something. It took us a little bit to find the right spot and it wasn't the most convenient location. But if it gets you fish, that's what you gotta do. What's this? Our first fish. It's like, it's like you said it and there they were. Here's the stringer. Whoops, sorry. Our first Copper River Red of 2016. We pull the gill like that so that they bleed out. Fish taste better if you let them bleed out while their hearts are still pumping. And we put it on a stringer and drop it in the water so it stays cold and fresh. Guys, it's about uh, just, just before 11 p.m. Yeah. We've been two out fish. here since seven o'clock and we've gotten two fish. We're in good company at least because uh, everybody else is only picking up two, three, five fish. Yeah. So. Frustrating. That spot we had had a uh, an amazing eddy, but the shale was like super sharp and the net kept grabbing it. But we're done. I am so freaking done for the night. Yeah, we're gonna go back to the RV for the night, regroup, and decide what we'll do for tomorrow. This is fishing. It's not catching, and we gave it our best shot. We're not giving up yet. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. And even when the fishing sucks, enjoy the ride. This knife is pretty dull. Yeah? Is that the one out of the drawer? Yeah. might wonder what you need when you go dip netting. So we'll share with you what we've brought down here. So far you can see we've got two dip nets and a huge cooler and we've also got life vests. You've got to be careful because this is a big river. We wear our waders with our wader belts on. This is not water you get into without a life jacket on. So uh, we'll show you the rest as we get it unpacked. We have a slew of uh, supplies and junk here with us. Gotta have music, dikes for all the uh, zip ties we use, scissors to cut tails, line in case we need to tie ourselves up to the rocks, and I'm about to get the nets off and clip them so we can uh, start fishing. We also use gloves out here. I'll show you the kind of gloves that I like. I used to go through a couple pairs of gloves every season until I started using these. It's the orange vinyl Atlas gloves. They keep your hands completely dry as long as you don't get water um, over the cuffs. 
and they keep your hands warm, which a lot of the gloves, your hands are cold, uh, even if they're dry. So I have taken to using these for dip netting, for fishing out on the boat, for pretty much everything. The other day I was, what was I doing? Decorating Christmas trees. Decorating Christmas trees. Oh, I was putting the um, blocks under the jacks the other day, and I was using these gloves for that. So, they keep your hands clean, warm, and dry. Highly recommend them. The other little tidbit I will share with you, uh, you've probably, if you've been watching our videos while we've been here in Chitna, noticed that I have this hat on whenever we are outside. This is the one I happen to have this year. I got it in Turkey last year, but it is warm, but probably even more importantly than that, it keeps the bugs out of my ears and it keeps my hair all tucked up underneath and so it's clean. Uh, when you're down here around these glacial fed rivers, especially if the wind kicks up, dirt is a major issue and when you're on water conservation you can't shower every single night. So I've been keeping my hair nice and clean and also not all tangled up by keeping it up in this hat and then the buggies are pretty bad so then they don't get in my ears either. It's kind of silly but really actually very functional. Speaking of bugs, you might wonder what kind of bug dope we use. Um, this is our favorite, Burt's Bees. I also have skin for, so soft at the house, but Ben doesn't like the way it smells. So we tend to go with this Burt's Bees. It works really, really well to keep away the bugs. You'd be surprised even though it's more, you know, tree hugger-ish or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Healthier um, than the DEET stuff, but it works really well. So if you're curious about what kind of bug dope to use up here, this would be our suggestion. And Burt's Bees didn't pay us to say that. So here's our dip net. It's a little large for the Copper River. Uh, this is called or considered a Kenai River dip net because it has a five foot loop. But you are uh, totally okay to use it here. It doesn't matter that much, but. What do you mean by a five foot loop? The five foot at the end. Okay. And the reason why you would ideally want like a three foot loop here on the copper is the current is so strong. So you're fighting the weight of a bigger net when you don't really need it. But this catches fish just the same way. Our second uh, net has a smaller, poof, bugs, a smaller loop on it. Yeah, it's not a dip net, it's just a regular old uh, mesh net. Yeah, but it still works wonders. Yeah, you catch fish off it. Yep. So there are literally so many fish in these rivers, we can literally, there's literally so many fish in these rivers. <sighs> Sorry, I was trying to hold it. There's literally so many fish in these rivers, we can just hold a net in the water and the fish will swim right into them. If the fish are in the river. <laughs> we'll find that one out shortly. <laughs> 